Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. And welcome to Jazzy Conversations. I'm Teef. And I'm Gigi. And we're excited to be here. Listen, thanks for checking in. Welcome to Jazzy Conversations. I'm Teef. And I'm Gigi. And G, it feels like it's been a minute. It, it, you know what? They don't know, but we know it's been a while. It's been a oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, G, listen. Yes. I've been busy. You've mm-hmm. been busy. Mm-hmm. But being back here right now, it oh, feels good. It does feel good. My I miss partner, you, man. I miss you, too. Listen, y'all see it's week after week after week, but this it's, it's been a while. Been I a miss while. you, man. Oh, man. <laughs> listen, we're going to catch up at our spot this Thursday. That's right. We'll go over the show, so have a good time. Um, listen, today we got an exciting show. Oh, gee. Yes. I'm soup. Me? It's, I'm always soup. I'm soup. I, this, listen, I'm the soup for everybody. But. Oh, my God. <laughs> True. Absolutely. Everyone's been amazing. This guy right here, Brian Hooks. Ooh, so, so freaking talented. talented. Mm-hmm. The guy is truly, truly talented. Mm-hmm. Done a lot of work. Oh. He's got a long resume. Oh, he has a great resume, yeah. and he's been extremely busy. Mm-hmm. But to well, nail him down, lucky his us. exact words will say, he said, let's do it. All right. So I was happy to hear it. He'll be on in about two minutes. Fantastic. But as of right now, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. All right. Let's play our games. All right. Guys, before we move forward, please, please, please hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and continue to send us emails and talk to us. Be a part of us. And please share this video. Yes, right, please. G? Please share. All right. Let's have Word some fun. Word out. All right. Here's the first question. And please, guys, play along. All right, G. All right. What we got, Teef? <sighs> First question. Macaulay Culkin was paid $1 million. He was the first child star ever paid that much money for what movie? Macaulay Culkin. Home Alone. Everyone was going to say Home Alone. Home Alone 2. Everyone was going to say Home Alone 2. <laughs> when I, I say this one, Gigi's going to go, no, oh. no, 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 no. Like, let me get another one. Maybe it was... um. Not hand the blocks of cradle. The good son. It was called My Girl. Oh, I, I did you see My Girl. I did. Yeah. I'm gonna guess one. that was one of the million. Yeah. That was a million dollar movie. Million, million dollar movie. Listen, get it where you can get it, Macaulay. <laughs> All right, number two. Mm-hmm. What rap song was the first to ever hit number one on the top Billboard 100s? Huh. First rap was song it, ever. I'm guessing it's a. On the top Billboard 100s, yeah. the hit number one and on the top Billboard. 100s. Okay, is it is it a is it a Will Smith song? No. Uh, all right. Is it is it um uh the hit the hit the hit? Don't stop the record. No, that no, is not no, it either. No. All right, then I'm guessing it is. Oh. Five, four, three. I don't know. Funky two, Cold Medina. If I'm a do something random. Called <laughs> Vanilla Ice. Ice, ice, baby. I have a I have a lot of emotions about that. I have a lot of be emotions. Nice, be I'm, nice. That I'm was even, a listen, he's a I have a lot of emotions. <laughs> All right, there we go. You're a mess. You're a mess. <laughs> All right. Number three. What actor starred in two of the highest grossing films of the nineties? Say that again. What actor starred in two of the highest grossing films of the 90s? Two of the highest grossing, the highest films, grossing films in, in the, the 90s. 90s. What actor? Two, uh, one actor? Yeah, one actor. Um, what actor? Is uh, Will Smith. Will Smith. You uh, are I knew he was so going to be one. Good. Is it yes. right? Yes. What movies? Oh. Ooh. For in the 90s was it Independence Day. Independence Day. And uh, let's see. Oh, um, Men in Black? Men in, oh, she's good. She's right? Good, right? And Men in Black. Ooh, I feel redeemed. Independence Day and Men in Black. Good, <laughs> right. Jay, look at you. Yes, All right. Yes. Quick question, guys. Mm-hmm. How old was Biggie when he passed away? Oh, hope this is like when the $1,000 minute game. Uh, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. <laughs> Biggie? 29, 20, 20, uh, 25, 26, 20, I don't know. 27. He was 24 years old. <sighs> Dang it, he was, he young. was young. He was, he was young. a youngin'. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. He was All right, young. and question number five, the final question. What is considered the first reality TV show of all time? 
the first reality TV show? Oh, the first. Well, I mean, I remember when MTV did. Um, what do you? What is it? Um, what is it called? Oh my gosh! Um, when everybody. Today, G. Today. Oh, you know, when I put this pressure on you, you don't like it. You don't like it. <laughs> I just said, right, I mean... right, right, right. And, um, what the heck was it mm. when everybody showed up and it was like, um, and five, four, three, two, dang it, the real world. I couldn't the remember real that. The world was but... considered the first reality TV show of all time. I, it's not actually, but. Well, you know, I'm gonna fact on trivia, check that. Yes, <laughs> I'm gonna fact check the real that. World. It, <laughs> All right, it's the first one for me for our generation for sure. Hey, yeah, this is gonna be a great show, Brian Hooks. I hope you guys are ready. You ready? Here we go. Welcome to Jazzy Conversations. I'm Teef. And I'm Gigi. And G, let's do it. Come Ladies on. and gentlemen, look who we have on the screen. Come on. Welcome there to the show. There you go. That's a very talented thank brother you, right you. there. What's good? What's good, you guys? There, there you go. Hey, <laughs> hey, Bri, it's been a minute. We've been trying to track you down for a minute. You, you're a very busy guy. Yeah, yeah, I know. We've been trying to make this happen for a while. But I've, I've been, you know... Shaking and moving and, and trying to keep them from cutting off my lights. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We ain't going to get in the way of your money. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny guy. Finally connected. My, my good friend, Kareem Grimes, who's a friend of you guys. So yes, it was great having him on the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. You're, you're going in and out on our, our end. Your volume's going in and out. Okay. Can you hear me now? There Is you this go. working? Okay. Yep. There you go. Yeah. yeah, Kareem was amazing. And he was like, listen, guys, my buddy Brian, man, we were like, what? Of yeah. course. Okay. Brian Hook. Brian, you're such a talented guy, man. Everyone's watching this. Of course, everyone's gonna talk about mm -hmm. all your movies, but we all remember three stripes. So uh <laughs> we're gonna get into that. Yeah, let's give yes, a, yes. an official intro, right? This yes. is Brian Hooks, right? For those of you who don't know. He's got a great resume. We're going to hear all about all the work that you've done. So this is, it's great having you. Glad you said yes. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys having me. Happy to be here. Thank you. So Brian, what we're going to do right now, we're not going to hold your time, but we like to tell the story. We want people to, uh, tell, to tell their story. And you have an amazing story. And it's funny because Gigi and I were talking, we're all the same age, same generation. And uh, to see your career start out in 96 and just, pew, mm -hmm. just take off. Uh, so yeah. we want to go back to the beginning. Um, I mean, from the beginning, 74 all the way up till now. <laughs> tell us tell us the beginning. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I was born and raised in Bakersfield. And, you know, I've always um, had an entertainment bug in me um, from Bakersfield. It's a small town, so it's only so much you could do um, to tap into that. But uh, I left uh, for college to go to Cal State Northridge in Los Angeles. Uh, from high school, and from there I was majoring in math, okay. um, but I would keep a theater class or a film production class because that was my passion, but, you know, my, moms and pops didn't send me to no school to become no super you know, nothing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, super something, but nah, we, we ain't going down there to, to play pretend in movies. There you go. So, so it was something I had to do, uh, you know, on the side or in addition to my schoolings. And then, you know, one thing led to another. And then um, I was uh, taking an acting class and I submitted myself um, through Drama Log, which is now Backstage West, where they have listed all these uh, independent film productions um, for a little small indie film called Fat Beach. Mm -hmm. And um, it was six or seven auditions later. I would get the leading role in the film Fat Beach, which was directed by uh, Doug Ellen, who was the creator of Entourage and did a lot of other uh, really cool mm -hmm. things. But that was like his, sort of his first uh, feature film wow. with my co-star being Jermaine Huggy Hopkins from Juice and Lean On Me and all those yes. uh, legend films. And from Fat Beach, um, you know, after that, you know, the film went on, it did good at the box office, but just went crazy and through the roof on DVD. Mm -hmm. 
And then um, from there, I've just sort of been blessed to be continuously uh, working and went on to do High School High and Beloved and The Eve Show and Three Strikes and Soul Plane and yes. Fool's Gold, a number of other independent films. So I've been uh, extremely blessed. It's been a different path for me, a very independent path, but, you know, I must say it's been fulfilling. Yeah, oh that's goodness. good. So far, right? Been so fulfilling so far because there's more in store for you. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I'm not finished running and gunning. And um, again, I've created sort of this independent lane for myself. And, and that's sort of been my foundation and my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time when I started, it was, um, you know, me and a buddy, Barry Bowles, and we went out and we made this uh, film for like $13,000. And it was called Cue the Movie. And when we finished, the movie was absolutely horrible. <laughs> but <laughs> it was 90 minutes and it was funny. Mm -hmm. And so it was coming on the heels of Fat Beach, which had done, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars on DVD. So this mid-level distributor uh, called Xenon Entertainment was like, yo, we'll take it. And long story short, this $13,000 film made $800,000. And from there, we had accidentally on purpose sort of discovered this niche in this space to where we ex could exist um, without, you know, the typical Hollywood gatekeepers mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. finding that for ourselves, and we didn't have to sit and wait on anyone. So that's when the time when you would go into blockbusters and you would see, you know, the biggest, you know, blockbuster movie, and then you see this you know, little goofy dude, Brian Hooks on the box as well. You was like, well, I'm going to take both of them. <laughs> and so your blockbuster movie, when you were also enjoying, you know, this independent underground funny dude. And, um, you know, Q made 800,000. I think uh, we did um, uh, Nothing to Lose, a romantic comedy, Barry Bowles and all. And that made over $4 million on DVD. So we really found this niche where we could exist with and, and sort of control our own destinies. And at the time, after a while of doing that, I really felt like, man, you know, why do I have to wear all these hats? Why do I have to do, you know, 10 times the work of some of my peers and so on and so forth? And I think what was happening was God was blessing me with these jewels that I didn't even understand. Learning, because learning as you go. Forward, yeah, flash forward, we in the most independent time ever. And, you know, because of me always having to make a film with, you know, one hand tied behind my back, now I could do it with two hands tied behind my mm -hmm. back blindfolded. And so I can always eat, I can always create, and I can always make a living for myself when, you know, some of my peers are still sitting waiting to be picked, so to speak. And so... It turned out to be a huge blessing, and that's why I say my journey was different, but it was an independent path that turned out to be, you know, again, a huge, huge blessing because I'm not just sitting around dancing, trying to, you know, mm -hmm. get somebody to pick so that I can eat, mm -hmm. you know? You know, in the West Coast, well, I think overall in the 90s, he was known as the DVD king out there. Like, that's your nickname. Wow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was because of the success of those films and just the, you know, the just just the huge reach of those uh, uh, films. And it sort of really changed even the way studios did business with some of the success of these films, because they were looking at those numbers and saying, wow, you know what I mean? Here's a, you know, a handful of films that we don't plan to do a sequel because, you know, it's, it's too expensive. But we can cut out the cost by making a sequel to this film that already has an audience, taking it straight to DVD mm. and making a ton of money. It's all profit. Mm. And that's where they got that from. And that's when you used to go in and you see a sequel. You're like, wait a minute. When, when did they do part two to this? <laughs> like, I didn't see that. It wasn't theatrical. They just put it straight to DVD and they sort of um, drew that from uh, the model of very nice independent um, films to where, again, we go straight to DVD. We don't incur the cost of a theatr theatrical release, which could be tens, 20s, 30s, 40 millions of dollars. And so it really, really changed the game. And um, you know what I mean? And, and uh, so 
again, it, it, it's been a huge blessing. Wow, wow. It is so impressive because we're talking about something that you were doing thinking to scrape by or to just stay busy. It sounds like, like, I want to find a way to, how can I be in this industry? Yeah. Like for something like that to really make room for you later on, I think is such an incredible and encouraging story. Like you, who knew? Did you, uh, you didn't know, right? That this would no, make I, a way for you. I, always, I was I just sort of accidentally on purpose. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the, the good thing, the positive thing we did is we got out of the planning state and we took a chance and we put ourselves out there Instead of talking about it, planning about it, thinking about it, we <laughs> jumped in. As I said, in Q, we got a lot of stuff wrong. But because we stepped up and did it, um, again, we had 90 minutes. It was funny. It was not a good film, but it worked <laughs> and it played. From that, we found that space. So that's why I say it was accidentally on purpose. Yeah. But, you know, it was that action and that, um, you know, and us being you know, uh, set on creating a space for ourselves. And, yeah. you know, it's, you know, I can't say it enough. It's been the hugest, biggest, you know, uh, blessing and uh, created a huge foundation for um, myself to where, again, I'm not waiting on anyone. Right. You know right. what I mean? That initiative. Yeah. You know, Let me, can I ask? Uh -huh. So you said that your parents were like, well, we're not sending you to school for no play acting, right? We're not, we're not doing that. Were, when were they convinced? Did, did seeing you do this hustling? Or at what point did your parents say, all right, yeah, it was we a, appreciate it? When, 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 when it was a, a, a limo being sent to get them to drive. <laughs> The taping of Eve and driving them back home when I wrote my dad a, a huge check to, to stop working, even though he kept working after that, he hustled me. Um, so it, I think I think it was, you know, they were always fine with it so long as I was going to school. Right. And then right. The, you know, once we got, you know, some of those studio checks start coming in and particularly the Eve show. Show me the money. So I was right. Just about to ask about that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Brian, this is a mix. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Everybody path is different, boy. Go on, <laughs> on, on, go on make that money, boy. Go on ahead. What, what, else, you, what else you got for me? <laughs> and they were, you know what I mean? Yeah. But they, you know, my parents are so, you know, we Bakersfield, California, born and raised. And it's sort of a very country town. I always tell it's just amazing parents because they, you know, at, in the middle of Eve when we, we were making a ton of money, um, they would still be like, "Hey, you, you, you all right? You, you, you need anything? Like, you know, that's just that, you know." Yes, that, beautiful, that, yes. beautiful. I love yes. that. I love that. Like, nah, you know, still checking on me. You know what I mean? Even though, you know what I mean? They, they, they back in the bank truck yeah, up to. Yeah. Now, now, are you the uh, only child? Yeah, I'm the middle. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm the older brother and the younger sister. Yeah. Are they in the industry? No, not at all. They, we, I was going to school to be a teacher, oh. and uh, they're both teachers as well. And my mom was a teacher, so, um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, right. so my my latest film is a romantic comedy um, that'll be coming out the end of this year. He wrote that, so we write a lot of stuff together. So, who wrote that? I'm sorry, we couldn't hear you. My, myself and my brother, oh, Roy. Nice. Oh, nice. That's the one. That's the one you said, yo, Teeth, I'm in the middle of editing. I'll hit you back. That's the one you said? That, yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, hey, now, listen, yeah. let me ask this question. I'm very intrigued about, uh, so I know the Eve show happened, but prior to that, because you're so independent, you were doing this on your own with no sponsor, no management, no agent. This is all you, everything going back to you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, you know, and, it, and and again, it, it came from that moment with Q when we just sort of ended up that change and um, sort of had that breakthrough with Q the movie when um, um, with Xenon. And then again, we just found this little space to where we could create these modest budget films that were having huge um, returns. Uh -huh. And so again, that sort of allowed us to build a foundation that was sort of unseen and people didn't really know how to gauge it and how to deal with it because no one had really at that time um created any lanes outside of the the hollywood norm right and so that was uh extremely huge for us and then and you know and even with um you know actors and entertainers and stuff they really 
you know, a, a lot of them, of them aren't business minded. So, you know, they rate success on, you know, when my face is on a billboard, you know what I mean? They would mm -hmm. rather be on a billboard in Times Square with no money than to have a whole bunch of money and nobody necessarily know what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, that part. Never that. You know, give give me the, you know, the security, the Absolutely. financial security mm -hmm. every time. And so that's sort of what we had, you know what I mean? And and a lot of people are like, you know, to me sometimes, you know, what you've been doing, are you still such and such? And But it's a whole host of things behind the scenes that I'm always doing and creating and mm -hmm. helping peers who, um, you know, that, 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 that you enjoy watching. So it, it really created a foundation to where I can control my own destiny, mm -hmm. which, it, you know, a lot of people can't say that, That's you know, right. and then you know what Tyler Perry did was the same thing I've been doing for years. And, you know, of course that went to, orbit you know a whole nother level with but he just started on the independent thing making his own way and then um you know it you know it took on a whole life of his own and now he is who he is wow now brian let's get into the three strikes how did that look because you did that on your own that audition how was that because that was a big you know, 2000 that was a big I'm yeah sorry. everybody thinks i did on my own but no that was dj Pooh, oh, who okay. co-wrote friday <clears throat> and oh. so on that one, um, mm -hmm. um, I had to audition. And the role was initially for Chris Tucker. He wrote it for Chris Tucker. Oh. But, um, you know, nobody, you know, anticipated the success of Friday. And so all of a sudden, Chris yeah. Tucker was like, Unreachable. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who be on the moon? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now, baby. And so, um, and there lie, and then it opened up, and then uh, DJ Pooh tapped me uh, to be in Three Strikes, and and that has sort of been a huge blessing that I'm extremely grateful um, that DJ Pooh entrusted me because, as you know, when you go back, you look to see everybody was in there, Monique, yeah, um, Epps, you know, E40, it was Faison. so many, uh, Yo, Faison, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. people in there, and this is a movie that just never dies, no. you know what I mean? <laughs> Hilarious. I all yeah. Corners of the world and people who don't speak English, they know three <laughs> strikes. And so and it's always, you know, it's always shocking to see the reach of that. And it never it always lives. And people are always looking for it. And they're always talking about it. It's just become one of those uh those uh hood classics absolutely. that just, you know, absolutely like wine. It just keep getting better and better with time. So uh three strikes was definitely, you know, a um it was an important milestone. Now you were journey. young in your career at that point, too. You under your belt. You didn't have too many films. So how did that feel to be with all these celebrities and working with these amazing, talented people during that time? It was just that. It was amazing because I've, I've you know, I've never walked around with an ego or you know what I mean, or any sort of you know any of that. So I'm fans of all these folks. Right. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So it's like the excitement of you know having the you know what i mean opportunity to star in this film and then also doubly exciting that i get to work with all these cool comics and, and big worm and all that stuff so it, it was you know dj pool i've been you know listening to his music with ice cube and knowing that he wrote friday co-wrote friday with q so it was all just super 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 exciting and i understood that it was a blessing so, you know, and I walked up every day just, you know, prepared and understanding that it was an amazing opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was uh, it, it was kind of surreal, you know what I mean? Coming from Bakersfield and just now being in this business and taking these steps and now doing, you know, I always felt like three strikes could be, you know what I mean? Something great. And then here we are, however many years later, it's still... You know what Still I mean? Something. It's not a day. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely. That, that somebody is like, yo, three strikes, not one day passes. So I understood that it could have been that at the time. And I approached it as such. And I was super excited, but very uh, prepared, you know, to, to, to make it happen at the highest level. It was just a blessing. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, great, great. So, so Brian, at in, in this point in your career, you've, you've accomplished much, right? Things that other folks really haven't. They didn't have the wherewithal. Things you didn't even know you were going to do. Where does it go from here for you? What do you want to achieve mm. that you haven't tried yet? 
I'm going to start stripping. I'm thinking like, girl. <laughs> I, I, I dug that hole. I dug, yeah, I did that. So. <laughs> He's crazy. Some size cowboy boots, and I'm going to put on like, oh, belt and draws, and it's going you know, it's gonna see where it goes. Let's oh, see, what, nah. see what happens. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, um, you know, well, again, it's such an independent time, so I'm sort of enjoying you know, the freedom and having the, you know, access to create the films that I want to create. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say there was a space to where it become mundane. And, you know, I wasn't as excited about the work that I was doing that I should have. And I tapped into, um, you know, my uncle Willie Hooks and he's a mentor and um, George Antone, who's a mentor. And, you just start talking and figuring out, you know, you know, what are you doing? How are you doing it? When are you doing it? What are you excited about? And long story short, I, you know, I went on this journey to sort of figure out what else, you know what I mean? What's my why? Mm -hmm. What am I doing all this stuff for? Is it just, you know, you just making a movie so people laugh? Are you making a movie to see how much you can make? And none of that was sort of giving me a rise. So long story short, you know, I went to I was going to school to be a teacher and I still I was always talking and mentoring youth when, whenever I had a chance to and I just love kids so after some soul searching and um connecting a lot of joint uh, dots and joining the Santa Monica Rotary uh and and being a Rotarian and 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 seeing the way they just go out and we have these meetings and they just like who can we help how can we help them? And their model is service above self. Mm. And so with my God-given gift of entertainment and my love for students and the background of the Rotary, you know, with this just this whole give, 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 I ended up creating um, Left of Bang Entertainment, which is a program that mentors youth and allows them to be a part of the entertainment uh, process. Uh, movies and TVs and film have this super magical effect on people and, and you know, uh, very much so on kids. So I always figure if I could allow them to have a piece of that and be a part of this, you know, Hollywood magic, that I can grab their attention mm. and get them to move and get them to see things beyond their sometimes limited mm. circumstance. So with this program, we take these youth and and do just that and allow them to be a part of the filmmaking process. And so they get real excited about that. But that's sort of the icing. And when you slice into this program, it's just layers and layers of mentorship. Wow. And so I've had folks like Anthony Anderson come on wow. and uh, speak to them, J.B. Smoove, <laughs> Vivica Fox. Um, you know, Craig Robinson, Kareem Grimes, um, and, and all these folks who've done all these amazing things in film. And and the idea is to show them that there's more out there than what they may be seeing with the music and entertainment and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. And whether they fall in love with the idea of filmmaking and, you know, because I give them classes and let them, you know, be on set. And so maybe they fall in love with that and want to pursue that. But if nothing else, they walk away with the ideas like, yo, if I could do that, I can do anything. You know Absolutely. what I mean? And the hugest factor when you have youth in inner city is having a mentor mm -hmm. uh, outside of the situation who's able to feed and share and give them um and, and share with them a, a different journey than they may uh, not be able to see, you know, and the statistics of them ending up in the system versus not by just having one mentor is night and day. Mm -hmm. And so Absolutely. I figured out a way to pinch off at least 10% of everything that I'm doing um, and put it towards that program. And, you know, I can't save everybody, but at least I know I'm safe mm -hmm. or two or three or doing what I can. And I can honestly say since I've started that, everything I'm doing is just a million times more fulfilling. Mm -hmm. 
That's and just doing it and seeing how much I can make and how much they can laugh and how much I can whatever. Yeah. It had just taken on a whole other, you know, it, it's hard to explain until you do it. But to to give yourself or give something without expecting anything back, you know, service above self, it just is it, it's, it's no greater high. You know what I mean? There's no love card. It, Car that gives you that feeling. There's no big enough house that gives you that feeling. There's no big enough award that gives you the feeling, the gratification that you get from helping someone. Um, you know, and and that being it, without expecting anything back. And so when I do that for the youth, that's been everything. And I feel like that's been the biggest thing that I've done and can ever do. And so beautiful. I just want to continue to grow, grow that. It absolutely beautiful. What was the, what's the name of the program again? Yes. Left of Bang Entertainment. Left of Bang Entertainment. Okay, oh, great. That's beautiful. Wow. What you love have it. described is that it is truly more blessed to give than to receive. I, I love. I mean, that's what you that's what you're describing in your in your journey. I, I love that. I love that. But I wonder is is there a way? Do you do people? Is there a way that people can support that program? Yeah, well, they can. You can uh, go and message on leftabangentertainment dot com, and uh, you know, if, if even if you have a, a kid or a child who you would like to be, because we also the um, pandemic sort of pushed me to put it on, online, which has been great. So now we have kids in you know Chicago and Florida and New York and Texas who can all be on at the same time as well. So that's been a blessing. So if you have a a kid or a youth who you mm -hmm. feel would benefit from the program, you can go on, message, and um, we'll make sure you get the info for when we start the other one and let you know, you know, the ins and outs and all that good stuff. Or if you just, you know, you have some resources of some sort and, mm -hmm. and you, you want to, whether that's welcome as well. So mm -hmm. just going through the site and, and messaging and then just take it from there. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. So Brian, important. Absolutely. Brian, this has been an amazing interview. Amazing. We're going to end shortly. But before we end, there's a question that I know people want to uh, told me to ask. Um, let's go back just a, a little bit. You got casted to be on Eve, which was yes. big. Yes. How was that? Yes. How, how did that happen? Tell us how that came about. You know, that one, Eve, you know, was it, that that was probably the hugest like, whoa, mm. um, couple reasons. One, TV with with film, it's the director and the producer, they like you, you're in. You know, one, two, <clears throat> whatever auditions. <clears throat> Excuse me. But with TV, it's more uh it's it's more sensitive. So mm. a lot of people have mm. to say yeah, mm. see somebody on TV, the you know, the creator, the producer, uh you know, the network, studio, the head of the studio. So it was like, it, it was a lot of uh, auditions to be cast on the Eve show. And I think just the, the you know, even the, the financial side, which you hear about is like, oh, you make it to Hollywood and you get that. And that was also a factor as well so it was one of those moments and one of those shows and one of those castings is like oh yo this can you know if you're smart this can shift the trajectory of your life forever mm -hmm. and so it was that you know we end up doing three seasons i think what um 70 something episodes um we had an amazing group with eve natalie desale sean uh, uh jason um, Allie and you know, bless her soul. Nellie DeSale passed yes. recently, mm -hmm. very uh, suddenly. She was the most amazing person and the funniest mm -hmm. person you ever meet. You never knew what was going to come out of Nellie's mm -hmm. mouth. <laughs> like you could not bring her around people who you, <laughs> if you don't bring that. <laughs> uh, but we we were so close. It was such an amazing experience. We would work all day together and then hang out, go after work together, which is sort of unheard for a sitcom. You work together that long, you know what I mean? They say, you know, that's a wrap and phew, people mm -hmm. shoot their different directions. But we would be like, okay, what are we doing next? Where y'all going? going? And nice. so it, it was just such a blessing 
to have that uh, group of people like that. And then again, you know, um, I think it was like every Thursday or Friday, they would back that truck up and give me that check. And I was like, and I was looking at it, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I like that. I, like, I like that. I want somebody to back a truck up. That sounds good. That sounds real good. I said, it's got to be illegal. Like, somebody going to jail, they're going to bust in here and all of us. They're going to find they, out. They're going to find out. That must be nice. Yeah, must so be nice. every time I just got my check, I put it in a sock because I never knew it was that. <laughs> that boy crazy. It was just coming from a small town like Bakersfield. And then being there, I just about like, yo, God is present in my life, yes, and yes. Uh, and I just I just knew it was it was a blessing, and yeah, I showed up every day, yes. ready to work. Brian, you know? we are honored to have you on the show. So Listen, before we go though, my partner has three important questions to ask you. Well, I'm I'm hoping to get three really good answers, at least one really good answer. What are the top three podcasts that you listen or subscribe to? I'm not a podcast person, but I would say this interview that I'm doing with you guys you go. is one. There you go. We'll take it. Period. Wonderful. <laughs> there we go. Period. Smart. This is a smart <laughs> guy right there. <laughs> uh, Brian, okay. on behalf of... Hands down. Yes, Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. On Thank behalf you. of Jazzy Conversations, I'm Teeth. And I'm Gigi. Brian, have a great night. Take care. Wonderful uh, to have you. Thank you, guys. Peace. Oh, gee, very Brian talented brother. Very talented. So you know, after each show, the pe folks are going to go back and they're going to Google. Oh, like, oh, oh, that's who I know him from. Absolutely, yeah. so talented. Really, really very talented. talented. Very talented. Very humble. Absolutely. Really genuine. Ah, oh, what a, another good interview. I enjoyed him. Mm -hmm, I enjoyed him. Mm -hmm. well, well, we'll do it again. We'll be back next week, guys. Tune in. Tune in. On behalf of Jazzy Conversations, I'm Teef. And I'm Gigi. Have a great night, guys. Take care.